You're listening to episode 767 of the Father Bills Podcast. Welcome back. This week's episode is entitled, Preparing for Eternal Life, given on the first Sunday in Advent, 2020. What preparations are we making for eternal life? What preparations are we making for eternal life? When I was a child, I assumed that everybody knew God. Everybody knew about Jesus. And yet today, I think this is less than before. Not everybody knew about Jesus back when I was a kid and less know about him today. Our culture has moved away from being neutrally secular to antagonistically secular. This makes being a Christian a very difficult thing. Sometimes even doing the sign of a cross at a restaurant can be embarrassing. Why? Because of pride. But see, we are called to be alert. Imagine, at that restaurant, Jesus comes. Wouldn't you like to have said and done that prayer and done the sign of the cross? See, one of the main themes of Advent is to recognize Christ's coming again. I think we're all recognized that it's the preparation for Christmas where we acknowledge Christ has already come 2,000 years ago. But the second part, the two comings of Christ, the two Advents of Christ, that second one is his coming again. And so we are called to prepare for that. I've had people ask me, Catholics who may have gone to another church, they came back a little confused, like, wait a second, you mean Jesus is coming back again? Is that what we believe? Because it was preached very clearly at another church. The answer to that is, yes, we've always taught that. The question again, though, is what are we doing to prepare for that coming What are we doing to prepare for eternal life? And so Advent is particularly geared to help us in this process as Christians. But we struggle to wait, don't we? I mean, in a day and age where we can binge watch our favorite television program, and I love how it's like one episode wants you to get the next one. I mean, if you're a Star Wars fan, are you not watching The Mandalorian? And if you haven't watched it, Two words, Ahsoka Tano. If you know what that means, then don't even worry about it. That could have been a spoiler if you're into this. But we have to wait and see if there's more. We have to wait a whole week. Some are coming out like programs once a week, as we're used to, but there's this new thing called binge watching. Well, it's not so new, but it's done. How many have we done that? I've done it. And like, I can't not watch the next one. I've got to see what's going to happen next. Do you remember the television program 24? Jack Bauer. And those were very episodic, and one led to the other. It was one day. The whole season was basically 24 hours. So I'd record it. It was almost too much to binge watch. It was just so stressful. I'm like, those need to be more than just a week apart for me. And I can't do this one after the other. Though I really wanted to. I wanted to do it. But it wasn't good for me. Just remember, good things come to those who wait. Ask any chef worth his or her reputation. And they will tell you that hurrying does not make a good meal. In fact, when I was at seminary, I had to learn how to slow down to eat and to walk. I used to work at Fred Meyer. I used to be a teacher. I would zoom back and forth everywhere I went. I would eat as fast as I could because it was just something that was in my way to something else. And now, I don't walk so fast. You didn't see me running down the aisle, did you? And I need to eat slow. 
It's a little harder when you're by yourself. Having a seminarian, having Anthony with us, makes me slow down and have a conversation with somebody. Can't talk to my dog. He's just there begging all the time. But this is what we have to do. We have to wait. Holy waiting. Because we do not know when Christ will come again. But as we heard in the opening collect, we're being challenged to be involved in some faith activity, some act of love motivated by our faith. And wouldn't it be great that Christ comes and finds us waiting in that way? Here's another way that we can wait. It is to recognize that Christ has already given us sacraments. One of them you received already, that is just uh, coming to communion and previous masses, but we're going to have that again today. We're going to receive Christ's very presence in the Eucharist. Well, it's not a sacrament. You've already heard the, the word proclaimed. Christ himself has spoken to each one of us. While it may have been my voice or Dan's voice proclaiming scriptures, it's the word of God. What did Jesus tell us to do? He said, watch. Be alert. Do not be caught sleeping. We could be a sleeper in our faith. We can sleep through Mass even. It doesn't mean literally we're snoring. But we get like, oh, it's kind of nice, beautiful in here. We can get distracted. Maybe you're thinking about the football game that's happening today. Maybe you're thinking about a chore you want to do. Maybe you can't wait to get out of here. Because something is next. All those things distract us from what's really most important. There's another one that I want to uh, offer a sacrament that helps us wait. Holy waiting. And it's a sacrament of reconciliation. We will not be having a communal reconciliation service this year because of we're living in COVID land, I like to call it. COVID time. It's not appropriate to gather 200 people right now. We'd be too close in our pews. And we priests also are not using our confessionals because of the small, tight uh, rooms. We're actually hearing confessions. I'm hearing confessions in the day chapel. Father Argy's hearing confessions. He's in the side of the bride's room. And you would walk into the cry room. How appropriate, right? Walking into the cry room for your confession. That's what we're going to do. We're going to hear more confessions. We're just going to expand our confession time. So on Saturdays, instead of going 3.30 to 4.30, we're expanding it to 2.30 to 4.30, a two-hour block. On Wednesday morning, we'll be hearing confessions at 9.30. Father R.G. on Monday himself will then hear confessions at 9 a.m. after the Mass. There's an 8 a.m. Mass uh, that gives them a chance to change and kind of reset and be prepared for confessions then. And of course, you can always call the office. Now, isn't this neat? we got this cool little schedule afoot. But I also recognize not everybody wants to go to confession for lots of reasons. And I'd like to help with that. That is, dispel those reasons, possibly. Number one, it's scary. True. I'm not going to make it less scary because... This is something that's interior to each one of us. That pride gets in our way and we're embarrassed. Just like being embarrassed about doing the sign of the cross in a restaurant. We are called to proclaim. This marks us, the sign of the cross. This marks us. People will see it. They may mock you. But what happens if Jesus is right there on the other side of the table? That wouldn't be so cool. It is embarrassing to admit our faults. It is scary, you could say, to admit that we've done something that we would never say that we've ever done. That dark sin. Because it's embarrassing. Maybe the priest will not think of me well. Maybe he might tell somebody else. Well, I can tell you this. We priests share nothing about what confessions are. In fact, we hear so many confessions on a human level, it becomes noise after a while. We don't remember. Like, I don't remember any of the confessions that happened yesterday. I know people came in, but I couldn't tell you what they are. They're, they're not particularly eventful for me in the sense, 
because I've heard them over and over. For the one confessing it, it's very difficult. So when I go to confession, I'm nervous because I have to say something that it's difficult to say to another human being. It'd be so much easier to go in the backyard and confess. But it's not the same event. Jesus himself gave us this sacrament so that we could celebrate our being reconciled to him and to the Father through him. So one of those questions that we often get is, well, why do I have to go to a priest for confession? My response is, first, why wouldn't you want to? Especially since Jesus gave his apostles and his successors this authority to do such a thing. And greater. If they don't believe that a human being can forgive sins, then how is it that even St. Paul, shadow, healed? People were raised from the dead because of that gift given by Jesus to his apostles. So, I think that's probably a little greater, right? It's like, what's, what's easier to say? Rise, pick up your mat, or your sins are forgiven. That was the challenge that Jesus was given. And he did both, just to make it clear who he was. But also he gave that to his church through his ministers. So why not? And I can tell you personally, it's a different event to go in the backyard and say, Lord, forgive me for whatever, than to go into the confessional and have another person respond back. And they're going to respond back with compassion and mercy. And how wonderful it is. People walk into the confession, sweating it out. And floating. I mean sweating that is coming in. And just floating on their way out. Because they've now heard that prayer. And I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's mystical. It's powerful. And it's something that a priest, you could say, wields against evil for your good. You've made what is in darkness light, and he then, in the name of Christ, then lets it go. Not to be remembered. So I want to encourage us. This is one of the, a very important way. Imagine having gone to confession, and then that's it. That's the end for you after that. Either something happens, like you don't make it home because of a car accident, or Christ comes back even. The end comes. Wouldn't you have liked to have been to confession right before that? This happens on a rare occasion for us priests when we go to see someone who's sick, who's dying, and they're still awake and we're able to not only just anoint them, which has in it the sacrament of reconciliation, but also hear an auricular confession, them speaking their sins and then giving them absolution. What a wonderful moment for them. I'm so proud my mom went to confession just prior to her passing. She was afraid. She said, well, but that priest, I'm friends with him. And I go, mom, he's friendly to you, but he's not your friend. You may be thinking he's your friend, but he's your priest. And don't befriend him out of a priest. You can be friendly, and he certainly is. Go, please. She did. She was so thankful. He was so great. And I'm like, that's wonderful. That's what it should be. Do not be afraid of confession. And allow it to be that way that allows you to wait. Now with more patience and more charity and more kindness with your siblings or your family or spouse, whomever at work. So what are you doing to prepare for eternal life? In closing, we Catholics have a privileged encounter in our sacraments. The sacrament of reconciliation, the sacrament of the Eucharist, and hearing the scriptures proclaimed. These are an incredible way, or I should not say incredible, an amazing way to encounter our Lord. So spend not just time getting presents. Spend time cleaning up our souls. That I think is a good thing to do during Advent. Let go of pride, the mother of a many sin, which often finds itself in being embarrassed. And just pour out your heart to Jesus. 
He will open his arms mystically to you and cradle you in his merciful love. What better way could we prepare ourselves for eternal life? Thank you again for listening to this episode of the Father Bills Podcast. If you'd like to listen to other episodes or you have any comments uh, on this particular episode, you can go to my website, fatherbill.org. That's F-R-B-I-L-L dot org. And there, again, you can also see things like an ability to uh, email me. You can go to my Facebook page, my Instagram, etc. And uh, there's some other podcasts I've done if you search around in the back pages and the back reaches of the the website. But anyhow, you can also go and just do, uh, take a look at other previous episodes of the Father Bill's podcast. In the meantime, may God bless you and stay safe. Bye-bye.